a instructional video on how to make this lightsaber that I designed uh, 3D printed using LED as the backlight. It slides out just like this. They all lock out in place. And uh, you'll see here. that it does a whole bunch of colors. That's a lot of light through. This flashing, so it's full RGB, so like 16 colors with a flash, and a fade, and you can just choose a solid color, whatever, and then it slides back in. Just like that. Uh, do a better demo video, but this isn't, sorry about that, this isn't a demo video, it's an instruction video, so this is how you make it. I wanted it to be as simple as possible, so I designed it so it's just this piece, the bottom, the handle, and six cylinders, or one cylinder print, I'll get into that more later. Uh... I didn't want to be a lot of soldering or PCB boards or Arduino and doing everything. So I found a, a good, strong, L circular LED light uh, with a remote uh, that was cheap for like 10 bucks on Amazon Prime, two day free two-day shipping. Uh, it's good, powerful, and I designed around it. Uh, so everything's designed around it, built for it. Uh, I chose that. When I decided to build the lightsaber, I chose my light first, uh, figured that out, and then designed. So, uh, uh, also with the prints, this is simple. Like I said, one one extruder, uh, no supports on any print. Uh, very simple. Uh, I am experimenting though with a dual extrusion print right now. Uh, I'll post all the STLs for also the dual extrusion and the single extrusion. I'm still trying to figure out the best uh, village chamfers uh, in places to do the dual extrusion because you can see it's it's kind of messy. Uh, it still looks overall good. Uh, I think better than just the solid. The black accents really bring out uh, the the character, but whatever. Uh, take it apart you see that unscrews there's your LED that turns on like that and the remote works to the LED all these buttons work uh, this slides down and then there's the cylinders uh, should look here the sliding can't really see it well but there's there's uh, grooves in there for the cylinders to slide through as you can see they all have little uh, slits right there to slide through uh, print just like this upside down the handle for first and then just print straight up it doesn't need supports or anything uh, all in all at point two which is the best resolution to do it at. I, I tried it at point three, but the fillets uh, kind of didn't print well. So at point two, it's it's good. Uh, PLA. I used uh, this aluminum PLA. It's, it's a nice finish. Uh, but you could use any PLA, ABS, anything you want. Uh, yeah. So about six, six, seven hours. Five, six, seven hours for that one. This piece is a little bit less, uh, probably about three, four hours. Uh, again, no supports. Prints just like this. Uh, there's one bridge right here that you got to worry about, but as long as your temperatures aren't too high and your speeds are good, you'll, you'll hit that bridge pretty well. The threading is uh, pretty good. Also, do this at point two. Uh, for the cylinders, I used Benlay filament. Uh, I like this filament because it's very transparent, translucent, or whatever you want to call it. Uh, it lets the opacity, or it, it lets, it 
it lets 91% of light through, so it's, it's very see-through. Uh, so it, it, it works really well with the LED and, and lights up evenly and uh, lights up well. It really light up a room. Uh, this, I designed the cylinders in two ways. Uh, as you can see, that this right one right here, this is natural PLA. You can see it has that yellow, milky color to it as opposed to the Benlay, which has no milky color to it. The Benlay is uh, about 60 bucks for uh, a kilo, I think. Uh, I'll post a link to get Benlay. It's, it's, it's an awesome film. It sticks well. It, it works really well. It's, 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 it's worth getting. Uh, I did this one in natural, but the, the main difference between these two is that this one, all six of these cylinders will print separately, uh, and then you can assemble it as you go. Uh, there's advantages and disadvantages to both. Uh, the advantage to this one is that you do print everyone individually, and you can assemble, so... It slides out well, it works well, uh, and if one one of these, you're playing with it, you hit it, one of these breaks, you can just print another one that will take about an hour and a half, two hours to print, and then you can just replace it, and it will work. The only downside is whenever these are extended, and you do something like this, and you retract it, they uh, have a tendency to get caught up in themselves and they don't retract well it's, it's an easy fix though you just extend it back out and then you start from the bottom and retract them all in uh, good design that's the advantage and disadvantage of that this one prints in one print just like this it's already assembled uh, it'll never come undone from the bottom uh, this will print in Benlay I just tried it in natural because I didn't want to use up all my Benlay just to prove that it works and it does so the STL is good uh, but it extends out just the same but when it retracts it retracts into itself and you don't get that that problem where it doesn't level out right uh, the disadvantage to this one as opposed to this one obviously is this is one print it's about 10 to 12 hours to print and uh, if it messes up eight hours in, you're screwed. If one of them breaks, you have to print the whole thing over again. Uh, but it is nice that it works uh, a lot better. These these guys are strong. I designed the walls three millimeters thick. Uh, with I print with three shells at 100% infill. So it's basically all shells all around. It doesn't do any linear hexagonal infill. It's just shell, 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 and then goes in shell, shell, shell. Uh, so it's, it's it's really really strong. I mean, not unbreakable, but strong. And Benlay is a very uh, good filament. If you print it at a high temperature, like 240, 230 uh, Celsius, it'll it'll adhere well, and it's, it it bends, and it, it's it's a lot stronger than PLA. Definitely a lot stronger than PLA. Maybe not as much as ABS, but definitely stronger than PLA. Uh, that's it for the cylinders. Now this guy. Uh, like I said, I designed around this specific light. So this screws in. There's holes in the design. They're already aligned right. Uh, and screw these right quick. See three AAA batteries go right here. You can see I I put in a stop for the battery. So when you press the board in, these batteries don't need to be taped down or anything. Uh, they'll just press up against this guy and uh, call it a day. It's good. Um, the remote right here. As you see, uh, I taped the battery on it. I cut up the sides. I, uh, for this video, I bought another $10 LED and remote. It comes just like this. So this is this, these two guys right here 
are these two guys. I'll show you how to take it apart real quick. It's very simple. Uh, undo that, you'll see there's going to be screw, screw, screw. So just undo those three screws. So make sure you keep these screws because you're going to need them. Uh, but here. Yeah, so the, this this little case you can just get rid of. Uh, now you have the LED board and the three screws that go with it. Uh, with the LED remote, the IR remote, what you're going to want to do here is you're going to want to take a corner off this front panel. There you go. Just peel that off. And as you can see, there's going to be uh, three screws. One, two, three. Undo them. This is very, very low voltage. So don't worry about the battery or power or getting shocked or anything. It's not going to happen. Alright, so, again, get this guy off. So that's good. As you can see, IR, there's the little IR LED, or IR, whatever the hell it is, diode. Uh, and then the battery, I'm going to take the battery out here. Make sure you pay attention to its orientation. So, it's going to go right there. Just fit it in. Make sure this little guy is on top and that's on the bottom. We'll tape it down. This can go away. Alright, so get yourself some a uh, little bit of electrical tape. Cut it up a little bit. Push that down. Don't worry about this too much. There's it's very low voltage and more or less just to keep the battery in place and to do anything else. I'll do one more. And what you want to do now that that's done is take this guy I guess the best way to do this is there's going to be a natural outline of where it was taped. So just try to line that up the best you can. Should work. Put that back on. And then get some fresh triple A's. There you go. And test it. So, that's a good test. Let's make sure that each one works still. Good. Now, with this guy, you got it all lined up the way you want it. As best you could. What you're going to want to do is you want to cut basically along the board. Straight as you can. along the board. This is uh, going to make it fit into 
a little thing that it needs to fit into into the design. Let's bend this guy down. Be careful bending this guy. Don't break him off. But if you do, it's not a big deal. Just solder him back in. Alright, so I made those cuts. I took off a little bit of the uh, buttons, but whatever. It's not going to matter too much. Alright, so... Let's see. Put him up at like a 45 degree angle. Just about, or just put him straight up as you slide it in. So slide, slide, and there you go. You see that's in there nice and good. And you can see here the uh, lights right there, the IR. So that fits, nice and snug, flush. Now for the light, we put the LEDs in, we tested it. What you want to do is the IR receiver right here. Again, bend him down just a little bit. Make sure not to break off the components, but he'll bend a little bit. Just like that. A little angle. That's fine. Just so that the light is lined up with him. Can't really see it, but those two line up. So they'll definitely work together. Test it. And here in the lineup you're gonna see where the holes align. And you put in a screw that came with it. I uh, designed it for this board and for these screws because I just wanted people to need to buy the one $9 LED and not have to go running and looking for screws or seeing anything that'll fit. I put the holes in the design built for the screws that come with the LED. Uh, and they work just fine. They go about a millimeter and a half into the print. And three points of contact is enough to keep it down. But I think if you don't want to use it, if, you, if you'd prefer a longer screw, I'm pretty sure these are M2s. Unless there's some weird version, like a M1.5 or whatever, it's, it's most likely an M2, but an M2 should work. this one because the threading is still good. Screw him in. It's nice because these screws that come with it are self-tapping so if the hole doesn't line up perfectly uh, it'll drive its own way in. As you can see, nothing's moving, and it works just fine. These are pretty powerful lights. Uh, as you can see, it's it's strong, so it really lights up that bend lay. All right. And then you're going to want to throw the cylinders, whichever cylinder you choose. Like I said, I'm going to post both STLs. And now that you know the advantages and disadvantages, you can make a choice which set of cylinders you want to print and with what you want to print them with, whether Benlay or Natural or Nylon or whatever you choose. That screws in. It's nice and tight. Everything's good. Everything slides, locks out, and let's see here, there it is, 
the lightsaber.